Thanks for coming over, this is Amadeus. Today's Dungeon Hunter Champions video covers three tips to success in Ultimate Blitz Epic. Rather than a round-by-round -round playthrough, we are going to condense our Dungeon Hunter Champions playthrough of Ultimate Blitz Epic to focus on rounds 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. We're going to be using a single free-to-play team consisting of Manus, Vimal, Xenia, Rhoda, and Valor. Now, I'm going to run this in the background so you can see how I put these three tips into practice for Ultimate Blitz Epic. So, number one, limit your champion selection. Dungeon Hunter Champions puts a lot of limits on you, and more specifically on your resources. So, for instance, you're limited in the number of six-star champs you can actually make. I mean, just think about how much time it takes to make one, right? There's also a limit on the gear you can have, given how much you can actually get it to drop depending on which raid you run and the amount of time you have every day to do that. I and mean, there's a lot of constraints built into that. And that's on top of the fact that there's a limit on the gold you can get to grind all that gear up to begin with. Now, you can minimize almost all of these issues if you limit your champion selection. So this means spending time on fewer units. This means these units get stronger or quicker. And your champions are going to get a return on your investment sooner. Speaking of investment, that brings us to tip number two invest in your champions now that you've limited the number of champions you're going to focus on invest everything into them because these champions are going to give you more return on that investment than any other group of champions you have these are the champions that you need to give the best gear sets to that you need to max the level of the gear of that you need to make the priority for skill ups and the priority for six star this investment goes a long way because these units are also the backbone of just about every other team you're going to construct from early to late game. So if you focus on these units, this is going to include PVE, all of the raids, Demon Kings, Elder Drake, Steel Widow, Outer Heart, all of them. It's going to include PVP, whether it's AO, AD, 5v5, Guild Wars, doesn't matter. You're going to be impacted by really investing in these units. So investing time, money, energy, materials into these champions, it's going to end up paying out across the entire game, no matter what you're really passionate about in the game to play or where you're at in your progression. Now, tip number three is replace your champions. Now, this may seem to go against what we just covered, but there may come a time in your progression when you summon an OP Nat 5 or even a Nat 4 that can totally change your Ultimate Blitz experience. So units like Basalt, Caroline, Eleanor, whatever, they can make everything easier in Ultimate Blitz Epic and Ultimate Blitz Legendary. However, before you dump your Unawakened Nat 5 into the team, you need to do some work. Now, we've covered what to do though already. Uh, I failed at doing it so many times as far as following my own advice in this situation that I want to cover it and go through it one more time. So first... Limit the champion selection to those units that you're going to help, not just in Ultimate Blitz, but elsewhere. Does that natty, that fat nat 5 that you just pulled, or that fat nat 4 you just pulled, fit that role? If, or is this unit only good in Epic Blitz? It's really important. Because, in all honesty, I probably would not build another champion that's good at uh, Ultimate Blitz. Epic, right? Or Legendary, for that matter. I'm just not in the mind frame where I'm going to do that, and I would encourage you not to do that either. This is my free-to-play Epic team, right? This team completes it. I don't need to do anything to this team right now, because no matter what I do, it's still going to be the same rewards, right? But let's just say you pull a unit, and it's good in 70% of the game content. Cool. Let's go ahead and build it. First, we need to decide which unit is going to be replaced, right? Not just here, but in those other teams as well. So whatever you pull, if it can be used in 70% of the game, what's it replacing? Which one of these units? So we've decided, we've limited it down, we know exactly which unit's being replaced. Fantastic. Well, now that we've done that, we need to invest in this new champion until they're actually better than the unit they are going to replace. Because you don't want to replace a great unit that you've invested time and energy into with a unit that's not there yet. So you have to invest that time and energy into that new unit. That means getting it to six stars, getting it ascended, getting it geared, getting that gear level, getting skill ups if it needs to have skill ups. Don't take steps backwards just to have some flashy nat 5 on your team. I've done it so many times with cool light dark nat 4s, with cool uh, nat 5s, and, and it doesn't change anything. Because finally, when you go to replace that unit, you're going to realize the same thing I do. You are reaping 
the exact same rewards as before. And frankly, I am always asking myself, was the effort of replacing that free-to-play unit really worth it? And most of the time, frankly, it's not worth it. Not from an epic blitz standpoint. Now, there are definitely units that are going to help you get faster times in Elder Drake. But nobody's going to bring a Candy Munchkin to Ultimate Blitz. And frankly, no matter how many times I run Elder Drake, the return on investment for energy and time in Ultimate Blitz is way better. Think about all the gems, all the summons, everything that you get. It's always really going to be better in Ultimate Blitz, whether it's normal, epic, or legendary, than it is going to be in an individual dungeon. Now that said, there's a couple other things to look at. This team works because we focused on the three tips with the right units. So the key for this free-to-play team is that everyone is doing more than one job. And it's, it's fantastic to see because, for instance, every unit reduces skill cooldown to help Baylor keep his shields up 100% of the time or double stack like you see right now. Now, that skill cooldown is also what makes him keep his silence up so consistently. And this limits the damage output of the enemy. It, this also mitigates the remaining damage uh, with his shield. And combined with both Manus and Vamal's small heals, it allows Zinnia to be our primary healer. And now we all know Zinnia doesn't just heal, right? She's an amazing unit. In fact, both Zinnia and Vamal do more. They strip the buffs off of the targets to make them more vulnerable. And this allows Manus to put on his buff block, Baylor to apply his silence, and then for Zinnia and Rhoda to come back in and lower defense. And then Rhoda speeds up the attacks so that you can spend more time dealing damage without having to worry just about Manus's OGD which is a typical strategy that we would normally have. Now, finally, by building this team, we can substitute the skill cooldown reduction synergy traits from the Timekeepers with the HP boost from the Archangel, just for floors with heavy strippers. So we don't have to bring in a special unit to handle that. We're just switching the synergy trait because this makes the floors with those strippers that are gonna get rid of that shield and stop all that awesome damage mitigation by just buffing up our HP a little bit. It makes the floors go a little bit slower but we get through them without them destroying our team. And like I said before, this is a single free to play from round one to round 50 team that works because of three really focused concepts. And, you know, we'll go over them one more time because I think it's always important because I fail at following my rules so much that we reiterate those at the end, right? So number one, what we have is limit the selection. Two, invest in the selection. And three, if you get a great unit, go ahead and replace it. But make sure you're replacing it because it's the right thing to do. Thanks for watching the videos, guys. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments if there's any other tidbits of advice you want to share with the community. And have a great day. Bye.